podcast episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Garmin and I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs. I design in knitting and crochet patterns, mainly knitting though. Um, and uh, I've just published a new ebook, which is called The Summer of Shawls, and it has four shawl patterns, two knit, two crochet, and of the two knits, there's one that's very easy and one that is a little bit more intermediate, and for the crochet shawls as well, one beginner, one intermediate. So there is surely something you like, and it's on sale right now. So I'll put the link down below. Uh, it's up for 12 euros for four patterns. Pattern, so that's really a steal. So I just wanted to mention that because the discount is not here forever. So I have just returned from Scotland. Uh, I was on a trip with my parents, my brother and my boyfriend, and we had an amazing time. And of course, I have a lot of things to show you, um, even though we went in a very small car. So we were with five people and three cars and <laughs> and still I wasn't able to bring home a lot. Why? Because we all chose very small and fancy cars uh, because um, so the purpose of the trip was to do the North Coast 500 and this is kind of a new-ish um, route. Well, it, the road isn't new, but the kind of marketing and uh, yeah, the marketing around it is new. So the North Coast 500 is for the kind of um, east and north coast of Scotland, uh, and it takes you from uh, John O'Groats, which is the topmost point of the UK, um, mainland UK, um, all the way to Apple Cross. And we actually did it the other way around. So we started at Apple Cross and then went to not as far as John O'Groats, just to uh, Thurso and then came back. But that was the main focus of the trip uh, because my, my father and my brother, they're quite um, fond of cars. They're quite, <laughs> quite the fanatic. So, um, so that was the purpose of a trip and that's why we only took small and fancy cars. Uh, so, but still I managed to squeeze in some goodies into my suitcase. Um, and I must have looking at them because it's, it's distracting. Yeah, you'll see them in a bit. So we went for two weeks. We, we drove our car onto the ferry. Me and my, me and Tim, we, um, went on the ferry from a Moden, which is close to Am close to Amsterdam, uh, which takes us to Newcastle upon Tyne. And from there we drove just a couple hours to Edinburgh. My parents and brother, um, they wanted to take the, just the day ferry. Ours was an overnight ferry. Um, and they took the day ferry, which is just about six hours from Hook of Holland, uh, so it's a bit more down south in the Netherlands, uh, to Harwich, which is kind of on the south uh, coast, I think. Uh, and so then they had to drive up quite, uh, quite a bit to Edinburgh. So yeah, and we met there in Edinburgh, and we stayed there for a day, and our vacation started. So I'll just take you step by step through our journey. I think that's the easiest for me and might also be fun for you. So, <laughs> so I'll start in Edinburgh. First of all, I really love Edinburgh. Um, it was the second time I visited because in uh, 2019, I also visited for Edinburgh Yarn Fest. So I already saw the castle and I walked the Royal Mile, but my parents and brother hadn't yet. So. Um, and it was quite rainy that day, <laughs> but uh, it was lovely. I did have a bit of bad luck uh, yarn shopping wise because I was there on a Monday and on Monday, all of the yarn shops in Edinburgh are closed. There are three yarn shops that I know of. There's um, Ginger Twist Studio, um, Paradise Fibers, or be inspired fibers. I <laughs> either one of those. Um, I mix up the names a lot. And I think Katie's yarn or Katie's wool. Um, I had visited Ginger Twist Studio before, uh, but I hadn't visited the other two. Ginger Twist is only open from Wednesday 
and uh, the other two are open from Tuesday as well. So if you're planning a trip to Edinburgh, just check their uh, opening times because I had wanted to visit, but I couldn't. But instead, we went to uh, Victoria Street, which is very famous. It's this street that it's kind of a crescent street and um, all kinds of um, multicolored houses and it looks very much like a Notting Hill or Portobello Road or something like that. Um, you know, it just has a lot of colored houses, really cute. Um, and they have a lot of uh, witchy, wizardy uh, shops there. And because I was still very focused on not buying too much, I bought the smallest items I could find, <laughs> which, um, which I happen to also really like. So this is a little book on tea leaf reading. And I just thought it was so cute. And look at the artwork on that. And really, it's... A guide for tea leaf reading and it has beautiful illustrations throughout and um, yeah <laughs> how to read between the lines oh rather the leaves uh, yeah it's 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 a lot of fun to read and uh, really quick too as you can imagine um, so this is just really, really fun. I think it was only five pounds, uh, and this one as well. The Witch's Spell Book for Love, Happiness, and Success. Doesn't It won't focus because of the shiny letters. There you go. And the side is also golden. And yeah, it just has a lot of spells. <laughs> I thought it was really cute and uh, there might actually be some tea recipes in here, you know, that could actually be useful, but I thought it was just kind of like quirky and cute um, to have these two. <laughs> Uh, and then around the corner of Victoria Street, there is this shop called the Christmas Shop. And I was actually surprised to see a lot of shops throughout Scotland being Christmas themed. So Christmas all year long. And I got a little puffin Christmas ornament there. Really cute. Um, so before I said that the purpose of the trip was to do the NC500, uh, which was the purpose for my dad and my brother, but for Tim and me, the purpose was to visit Honda Island to see the puffins. So buying this puffin ornament might have been a bit of a, you know, jinx, but um, I thought to buy it for good luck. So, and I think it's really, really cute. So let me tell you a bit more about the puffins, um, because they live mainly on the open sea and they only come ashore to, you know, breed and hatch their eggs. Um, so there's only a small window where you can see them and they nest around the east coast of the UK and you know and also on the islands I think Or Orkney Island and Shetland Island um, are popular nesting places as well and then in Norway as well um, but still and um, uh, before we went uh, I was talking uh, with a couple friends about you know our trip and trying to see <laughs> and and you know explaining that we were going to see the puffins and and they were like oh are you sure about that um uh, because you know um uh, my friend tried and they didn't see it and uh while we were in scotland and you know sometimes in shops you hang around a bit you chat with the owner and um and yeah the main <laughs> kind of idea about puffins is that they're very elusive and oh you know keep your fingers crossed if you want to see them so so <laughs> when we got closer and closer to Honda Island I just you know the nerves were oh my god so 
Uh, but yes, I got this little uh, ornament for good luck and it will go on our Christmas tree. <laughs> Um, so yes, Edinburgh, lovely, definitely um, uh, visit if you can. And afterwards we went to Stirling, so we were in Stirling on the Tuesday, and because I had you know, no luck so far visiting yarn shops, so I desperately wanted to visit a yarn shop. Um, and in Stirling there's a um, kind of a shopping center. Uh, I think it's called Thistles. Um, lots of things are thistle themed in Scotland, it being the national flower. And so in this shopping center, uh, there were many lovely stores and one of them is Cory Creative. So that's Cory with double O, uh, C-double-O-R-I-E. I might as well just spell it out loud. Cory Creative, I think they're very focused on uh, workshops and they have lots of weaving there right now. Uh, I think also punch needle if I remember correctly. Um, but it was it was lovely and here they had lovely hand dyed yarns and I was lucky enough to pick some up. I'll um, get them out of my bag. <laughs> This is not what I got at this single store. This um, this is actually from a different store on Isle of Skye, which I'll talk about in a bit. And these two were the yarns that I got at Cory Creative. So this one is Buzzin Yarn, which is hand-dyed in Scotland. And the colorway is called Coral Seas. And it's hand-dyed, deluxe, high-twist sock yarn, 85% super fine, 85% uh, super wash, extra fine merino, 15% nylon, and it has approximately 360 meters per 100 grams. And they have an Etsy shop as well, Buzzin Yarn, so that's without the G of like buzzing, so Buzzin uh, Yarns dot Etsy dot com, and they have a little. B on there as well. Really cute. And yeah, I just thought this was a beautiful colorway. And when I was looking at this, I was thinking, uh, you know, other than socks, what, you, what can you do with just one skein of yarn? And I think the Jessie May crop tops you know, kind of the bra tops um, can be made with one skein, I don't know. Um, so I might make that because this is really, really soft and um, yeah, and a bright color that I won't really wear on the outside. <laughs> so I think that might be um, the idea for this. And this is by Dye Ninja. And it is, I'm actually not sure if this is from Scotland, but it's, you know, there's a chance. Uh, this is called the High Twist Merino Fingering, and the colorway is Spring Greens. And this is 100% fine merino wool and 365 meters per 100 grams. And they have a website, dyeninja.com. And I just thought this was so beautiful and I, I don't have a lot of variegated or tonal uh, yarns so I thought this might be a great addition and I think this would also look really nice in color work um, so I love to do color work with variegated yarns and if for example uh, you were to pair this with a dark navy or with a olive green um, dark forest green, that would be absolutely beautiful, perhaps as the contrast of a yoke. Beautiful. So <laughs> that's uh, what instantly got into my head um, with this skein. Uh, so I got these two at Cory Creative in Stirling. Uh, we also did a little walk up to Stirling Castle, but by then it was 
raining again. <laughs> still, I mean, it still is beautiful and to see these kind of moody skies and clouds and I quite liked Sterling as well, I must say, and we had the best Indian food. Um, I think it was called the Indian Cottage. Um, very nice. So, and it was the first time for my parents to have a uh, papa dance, which was uh, an experience and they really liked it. <laughs> So that was Sterling, and I have to think for a bit uh, where we went next. I think it was Inverness. <laughs> Let me check the itinerary because my mom and dad love maps. So my mom made this for each of us, and then my dad had maps for, you know, the routes each day. Um, of course, we would have them in our navigation system but yeah so Stirling to Inverness oh yes and we went around Cairngorms National Park that's just Cairngorms is amazing it's a must see um, you know people say Isle of Sky is a must see but Cairngorms is definitely more beautiful um, and the the East Coast is even more beautiful so um, uh, Cairngorms is this kind of national park and you can drive around it uh, in about six hours um, we actually did that round trip when we were in Edinburgh uh, three years ago but now we just went around the right side uh, and then up to Inverness um, and Inverness I have to say I wasn't really a fan uh, it just seemed like a city um, and we did stay in a lovely house um, and um, yeah I mean it's it's great for shopping uh, but yeah I'm just not really a city fan uh, I guess uh, but there were some lovely shops in Inverness and the first one actually that we saw um, was a fabric shop. When you go to Scotland you see a lot of Harris Tweed and what do I show you first? Here, <laughs> I even kept the bag. So here is the bag um, and you just, you know, you see a lot of Harris Tweed. You see um, uh, mostly bags, uh, shoes, hats, gloves, um, sweaters, dresses, everything. Um, scarves, uh, I think they're usually made with a different type of wool because the Harris Tweed is kind of scratchy. You know, even I find it a little scratchy. So, um, uh, but it was, it was kind of pricey. Um, and yeah, my, my mom, she's a real bag person. She was, she, so she was hard eyed the whole time, but I thought, well, obviously I'd like to make something myself. Um, and then in Inverness, there was a shop where you could buy the fabrics. And I had Googled before and um, alongside, along the left side of Cairngorms, there was also this uh, town called Newton Moor. Um, and they also have a big Harris Tweed shop. But luckily in Inverness, they, this was a smaller shop. But uh, they also have the fabrics. And I got this fabric. Look, I love it so much. And yes, it matches my wallpaper. Uh, it's just very much my style. Um, and then I, I just love the orange and the greens in it as well. Those little uh, thin stripes to make it pop a little bit. I love that. Uh, but overall, it's just beautiful pinks and blues, uh, and then the, the kind of soft browns. I just love it. And I got 30 centimeters, and then I think there it's 150 long. I think so. So the width is um, 30 centimeters. And yeah, I, I'm planning to make a project bag for myself. Yeah, so that is really exciting. And I got some uh, smaller pieces as well. So these were actually coasters. Um, they were just, you know, four pounds. Um, uh, for the fabric, I think it was 20 pounds. 
So these are just small squares. And I thought that they would make cute pockets or other details. Um, yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, I just think that is really pretty. And I got some cards and I got a label. So I got the Harris Tweed label as well. And you could choose between a couple of varieties of labels. And that is just, yeah, <laughs> that's just really fun. So uh, I'm really happy with this purchase um, because, you know, it's something different and it's wool and it's tartan and I love it. So I'll be making a bag from that. Um, I have some, you know, I have a sewing book, which I think might have a good bag pattern in there but um yeah i'll see um this is not and i don't have to do this in a hurry so i can just uh think about it a little bit but still i hope it doesn't stay uh, in the closet for too long and then so this was kind of in the old market street of inverness and then when you walk towards um the ness bridge um you know, you, you have, it's, it's a large shopping street and, you know, you have a McDonald's there and lots of souvenir shops. And on the left hand side, um, there is uh, a really great um, cafe. It's called Xoco, X-O-C-O. And if you're there, try the gingerbread white hot chocolate. Amazing. Best. <laughs> best hot chocolate I ever had. I, I love white hot chocolate, but with the gingerbread, it was perfect. Um, and next to it, there is, um, ooh, Jillian Glue. <laughs> ooh, um, I'll have to look that up. Uh, we went inside. I didn't buy anything, uh, because they did have yarn, but I thought it was a little pricey. Um, it was 36 pounds for a skein and it was just like, yeah, it's not really in my budget. So, um, but it was a lovely store. Oh, I think it was called Judith actually. Yes, Judith Glue. So glue as in the adhesive. <laughs> Judith Glue in Inverness. Uh, it's just a great um, gift shop actually. Um, they had lots of uh, puffin themed things as well. I took some pictures, so I'll be sure to put that in. Um, they had, yeah, just lots of stuff that you can buy for people that you really, you know, you have to buy a present for, but you don't know what they like because they just had stuff that, you know, everybody will like. Um, and yes, great, beautiful yarns too, but uh, yeah, a little out of my budget, so uh, so I didn't buy a skein there. But then um, across the Ness Bridge, uh, and if you cross it, if you look over your left shoulder, you can see the Inverness Castle, so that was really great. Um, but if you cross it and then walk a little bit down that street, uh, there's the Woolly Sheep. The Woolly Sheep. And this was a really beautiful store. And, you know, you come in and there's this big display of yarns and uh, all kinds of goodies. Uh, and the first thing that I noticed actually were that was that they had cups. Um, you know, skein cups, ball cups. And of course I got the one that says, I like big balls and I cannot lie. <laughs> I know, but yeah, I like it. And they had they had more colors as well, um, different um, different text on there. Um, so yeah, but I really like it and it's a nice size. So so I got that at the Woolly Sheep, and I also got a book because um, you know. Books are easy to pack if you have, if you don't have a lot of space. So I bought 
a lot of books this um, this holiday and I love learning more about the history of knitting and especially color work or Shetland knitting or lace or uh, Boha's knitting from uh, from Sweden um, I love these kinds of books and uh, usually they're very cheap too I think this was only five pounds um, the art of Shetland lace and if you know a bit about Shetland lace, um, it was, I think, one of the first, um, the, the Shetland knitters were one of the first knitters who knit to, you know, help their economy um, and to actually produce knitted items as, you know, items to be sold. Um, and the Shetland lace is often garter stitch lace. And something that I especially love is that they have Shetland knitting terms in here. So instead of knitting, they would call it macking. And stocking stitch was plain macking. Garter stitch were reggies <laughs> or reggies. Um, and in the in the pattern uh, for a yarn over, they just have a capital O. Uh, which I think is really clever uh, and they don't call it a yarn over but they call it a wool over and uh, it's just I love these kinds of things and uh, yeah, beautiful lace patterns in there um, yeah so um, this was a great find and it was the last one in the shop so I'm not sure if she'll have any more but uh, she does have a online shop as well um, oh it's not on here um, but I think it's just the woollysheep.co.uk. Um, yeah, but lovely treats there. So I had a very successful day with the Harris Tweed and then uh, the yarn shop, the Woolly Sheep. So we stayed one full day in Inverness. In most places we just stayed one night, but in Edinburgh and Inverness and in some other places we stayed for two nights. Um, and then after Inverness we actually had the biggest day <laughs> i mean the the um, longest drive um because one of our accommodations so finding accommodations in north scotland is uh quite difficult uh especially now for the north coast 500 um and many locals are not a fan of the north coast 500 because it encourages people to fly by and not pause and you know take in all of the scenery and um you know and provide more income for them obviously um so lots of uh bed and breakfasts and hotels will will require you to stay for at least two nights uh which of course is completely fair um but you know during due to our schedule we weren't able to do um uh that on every um for every uh, city for every stop uh, so um, so we tried to just plan a lot in advance uh, and then one of our bookings actually cancelled on us because they had to um, sell the property to do to, to family circumstances um, and so we had to find another um, accommodation there and it was quite a bit further um, further north than our original accommodation. So that meant that from Inverness we had to drive all the way through Apple Cross and Ullapool and up to Scourry where we would go to Honda Island and that trip was seven and a half hours. Um, it could take just three hours but if you want to go the scenic route via Apple Cross, uh, Apple Cross is kind of the only alpine-esque road of Scotland with lots of hairpin bends uh, so it's it's very very popular uh, with anyone who drives and you know even um, even bicycles and um, yeah so uh, so seven and a half hours yeah, and on top of that, I got really nauseous at Apple Cross because not only do the bends, <laughs> not only do they have lots of bends, but also like roller coaster roads. So I got super nauseous. Um, so by the time we got to Scourie, I was falling over. Uh, and then, so uh, for the places 
uh, up in North Scotland, um, especially for like the, the top left corner. Um, book your restaurants in advance as well because we weren't able to um, get a table uh, for that night. Uh, so we just got uh, uh, fish and chips from the, the chippy in the village, which was also really nice, and uh, some Tesco salad <laughs> the next day. Uh, but uh, the highlight, of course, was Honda Island uh, on the Saturday. Um, we went to Honda Island, and you have to go there with a ferry. Um, I don't remember how long it took, not, not, not really long, but the ferry is really small, it can only hold up to about 12 or 15 people, uh, and you get a life fest and everything, and each day they really have to make sure that the sea is calm enough so they can, you know, um, <laughs> do the trip. Um, I wanted to say drive, but obviously. Um, so they so the ferry can actually go and we were the first one uh, we were there for the first ferry on Saturday and on Friday they hadn't gone because it was such um, yeah miserable weather on Friday so we were oh, we were so nervous I, I was so nervous that my stomach just ached all over and um, but the ferry went and uh, we were all very happy and there were many more people like Tim and me, just nature enthusiasts and um, yeah, wanting to see whales or seals or otters or uh, seabirds and um, yeah, um, so we got in the boat, we we're all super happy, um, it was calm enough so that I didn't get nauseous uh, and the, um, the cat is it still a captain if it's a small boat? Anyway, the captain um, told us that um, they sometimes even had orcas there um, playing with the boat as if it's a cork. <laughs> and so they're not aggressive at all, um, at least the ones that, um, that they saw and um, that they're just really curious and playful um, so that was interesting I mean we obviously we didn't see orcas that day but um, uh, so we got to the island there are a couple people living on the island just volunteers uh, who monitor uh, the wildlife um, lots of birds on there so if you're a birder definitely go visit um, and carve out a couple days of your itinerary for Honda Island because, um, you know, because there is a chance that the ferry might not go. So see if you can be a little bit flexible and the ferry does not go anyway on Sunday. Uh, so, and originally we had planned to be there on Sunday, so we had to, um, shift things around a little bit so we could be there on Saturday. Um, uh, there are lovely people on the island. Uh, they tell you where to go. Uh, basically, it's just a round, um, you know, walking trip. There's a very good, you know, path there that was still being built by volunteers there. I'm actually not sure if, if those are volunteers, but they were still making the path, like, uh, splitting rocks uh, so they could make steps with it. And uh, But it was very, very good. And we sell puffins! Uh, so that was amazing and I'll be sure to put in some footage. Uh, we were so so happy to see the puffins and they are so cute. And we saw lots of other birds as well. Uh, great skuas. Um, I, I don't really know the English names for most of them. Uh, but uh, guillemots, razorbills, um, uh, and some others and yeah it was just amazing and we stayed there for a while you could walk around in just I think an hour or so but we took I think we spent about five hours on the island we took the the, the boat uh, back to the mainland again at four I think no 3 or 4 p.m. and we also saw seals so yeah it was it was just an amazing day and uh, but we were super tired afterwards I think also because of the you know nervousness and then it being okay and then whew, um, and I got a little 
puffin souvenir as well. Um, <laughs> Of course, I had to. Uh, during the rest of our trip, we also uh, managed to visit a couple of RSPB locations. So RSPB is the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds. And um, if you go to one of their locations, they also have a lot of pins. Uh, well, you have to be lucky, but sometimes they have a little box of pins and you can donate a pound and take a pin. And it's basically like an honesty box. Um, and I got some pins and we were very lucky to find the puffin pin as well. And Tim has another one where he's just standing and I have a kingfisher and the red grouse, the famous grouse. We did see it. And I have one on here as well, a little plover. So yeah, super cute. Um, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot something that we did in Inverness because I also got pins there. So um, so yes, Honda Island. Um, track back a little bit to Inverness uh, because close to Inverness um, is the battle are the battlegrounds of Culloden, which I think some of you will know from Outlander, uh, but Culloden is, you know, it, the Culloden battle actually happened uh, in 1746, I think, or 1745, I think 1746, and uh, it was very impressive to just walk there and, um, you know, it's, it's in fact a graveyard uh, because, you know, a large battle happened there and uh, some of the troops are buried there um, and you could walk along the um, the English line and the Scottish line and the English line had red flags and the Scottish line had blue flags and there were stones everywhere where you could um, you know uh, with a little bit of explanation like okay here was the Duke of forgot his name but um, and in the in the middle between the lines, there's um, kind of this memorial stone, <clears throat> and around those there are smaller memorial stones for each of the clans. So I saw the stone of Clan Fraser and Clan Mackenzie, I think. But, but most of the clans are just you know there are stones that say mixed clans um, because not each, not all of them got their own stone. Um, and it was, yeah, it was just very impressive. And, um, they had, they had, um, put effort into kind of restore it to how it was, uh, then. Um, so that's almost 300 years ago. Uh, because after the battle, uh, it actually was turned into uh, forestry ground, so so to um, land to build trees on for production. Um, and because of the roots of the trees, the um, uh, the soil like was very uh, distorted, disrupted. So um, uh, so um, I don't think they could find any more remains of the actual battle. Um, Maybe they found some, but um, um, the, it was mainly very disrupted. So they tried to re, um, remake it, re restore it, of course, to their to how it was at the time of the battle. Um, yeah, it, it definitely um, it was uh, one of the highlights of the trip because it was just very. Um, clear that, oh, this really is a place of, you know, history where things took place. And, um, and of course, we also went to the gift shop. Uh, I feel a little bit weird, um, you know, um, being enthusiastic about the gift shop while it's such a kind of serious place. But um, I did get some lovely souvenirs there. I got a pen of a Scottish Highlander cow really cute and I was happy to find a thistle pin 
So thistle is the national flower of Scotland and uh, there is a legend to why the thistle is the national flower and uh, I say legend because I'm not sure if it really happened but it really is a great story at least. So the story goes that um, um, I don't know where in Scotland but somewhere in Scotland troops were um, preparing for battle um, and uh, I think it was uh, they were preparing for an attack from Scandinavian forces I think and the Scandinavian troops had uh, took off their feet uh, <laughs> had took off their shoes rather uh, to uh, to make for a, uh, a most silent approach and it was also during the night so they wanted uh, they wanted to take the Scottish troops completely by surprise but one of them stood on a thistle and of course they are very pr prickly so it hurts so he cried out and it alarmed the Scottish troops and they were able to win that battle because of the thistle so that's the story uh, not sure if it's true but it is a hell of a story and uh, yeah, and the thistle has been the national flower ever since, and you'll see a lot of thistle references everywhere. Um, and of course, in the Sassenach pillows, I also included a thistle color work chart for the Jamie cushion as well. So yes, very happy with those little souvenirs. Uh, so back to our uh, NC500 trip. Um, and... After Scoury, we uh, drove all the way to Thurso, which is a beautiful drive. And uh, along along this road, um, we took a little detour. There's like a little dip uh, in the road um, at uh, Tongue. Uh, so you can drive straight through to Tongue. Or you can take the detour, which um, uh, our B&B owner called the Jurassic Park route. So just before Tongue, I think uh, there's this, this place called Hope. You uh, go down to Altnahara and then back up to Tongue. And this route, it takes about an hour or more, but it was really one of the most spectacular scenery that we've seen in the entirety of Scotland. It was beautiful. Um, and yeah, it really was like Jurassic Park. Um, <laughs> uh, I just thinking about uh, the, the bed and breakfast owner when he was uh, telling us about this route and uh, he was from the south of uh, England, actually, I think. And he was like, and on this road, if you're very lucky, you can see dinosaurs <laughs> and uh yeah it was just um he was a uh, a character um so beautiful route uh we continued on i think to betty hill or maybe betty hill is before i don't know we went through betty hill beautiful as well uh and then there's the so and we didn't actually think that there so was going to be something it's it's one of the bigger places and it's it's next to the ocean so we didn't really think that it was going to be something especially because our um the house that we had rented uh was in this kind of gray area suburb kind of you know looking very empty but then when you go to the city center which is closer to uh to the ocean it is it's like almost bustling uh maybe I mean, we were there on a um, Sunday night, so maybe it wasn't their busiest night. Um, but even then, you know, the, the restaurant we were at was packed. Uh, it was called the Why Not Bar. Um, they had the most amazing drinks. I had a unicorn gin topped with candy floss. Uh, I can really recommend. Um, and yeah, really good food. And we were all saying, oh, we would have loved to stay here more than one night. Uh, also because the bed and breakfast, uh, it wasn't a bed and breakfast, it was a house, um, was really, really comfortable. And um, yeah, we would have loved to stay more. 
So I'll try to speed up a little bit because I think this video is getting long. So from Thurso, uh, we drove uh, south again towards Inverness, but is staying in a village uh, above Inverness. And then from there, the next day, we did a round trip that was, again, really long, of the Isle of Skye and then ending at uh, Loch Ness. We drove all the way to Isle of Skye and there's this kind of uh, round uh, trip that you can do. It, it was it was really really amazing. Isle of Skye is really pretty but I would say that the prettiest part of the island is uh, where you can't really come with a car so uh, but there was a hiking trail leaving um, uh, from somewhere we could see by car um, so I think that would be lovely to do. On Isle of Skye we visited two yarn shops and also a Jurassic footprint, which was really cool. And I think I'll actually make a separate video about Isle of Skye because, um, yeah, because I think I can give some more information. So uh, on Isle of Skye, uh, we visited two yarn shops, and both of them only open from uh, from noon at least on the day that we were there. So do check the opening times before you go and also check if they're opened at all that day. So the first one that you kind of come to uh, and it's kind of uh, next to uh, next to the co-op supermarket and also a petrol station, you have the hand spinner having fun where I also got the bag. So this is their logo, the hand spinner having fun. Um, and it's a it's a big yarn shop. Uh, it's a really big yarn shop, and uh, it's bright yellow with I think a red door and uh, a bright pink sheep. So you cannot miss it. Um, and they had um, a beautiful selection of yarns. Let me just take out the ones that I got there, and I got another yarn there um, that I don't have with me right now because I got it from my mom. So they have a great selection and they have both commercial and uh, hand dyed yarns there. They have lots of West Yorkshire spinners. They even have local Isle, Isle of Skye wool uh, and as their shop uh, name suggests the hand knitter, uh, the hand spinner having fun. They have lots of hand spun yarns as well. And my parents have already been to Isle of Sky one time before, also three years ago. And back then my mom brought me home a skein of their hand spun yarn. So now I wanted to buy a skein there for my mom. So, and I'll be sure, I have a picture and I'll put an arrow there or uh, which one it is. You see a lot of um, hand-dyed yarns just hanging there and there's one this kind of uh, blue-green um, it's kind of a um, yeah a, a deep sea blue-green. I got that for my mom. Uh, and I got this hand-spun gorgeousness for myself uh, and it has a sparkle in there which you can see very well in real life but I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera. Oh, there you go. Um, and it wasn't a skein, but now I've made it into a ball. So this is 50 grams handspun merino wool with glitter lace weight, and it is called Unicorn, and you can see why. And it's really beautiful and um, I, um, I'm not sure yet what I want to use it for. I would love to use it in a sweater, but uh, then I would have to be very delicate with that sweater. So I might make a shawl out of it. Um, I just have to think a little bit because hand spun yarns, uh, I don't want to wash that often. So um, yeah, so perhaps. I'll make a, uh, a shawl with it. We will see. So we had to pause right there because my camera overheated um, and then <laughs> the battery was dead. So, uh, But in the meantime, I found the little flyer that I got from the hand spinner having fun. So this is the outside of the shop and you can see a pink sheep uh, at the side of the road. And this is the inside 
of the shop and I have some photos and footage as well uh, so I might put that in already or save that for a separate video so um, I got the hand spun yarn I got the hand dyed yarn for my mother and I also got these two balls of JC uh, JC Rennie and company and it's a mill in Scotland And I actually met with, um, I think, the son of the owner at um, Edinburgh Yarn Fest a couple years ago. Um, so, um, so when I saw this yarn, I was like, "Hey, I know them!" <laughs> uh, and I bought these two of their Chunky Aaron, and it's 100% wool, 50 grams. Uh, and this one is called Heather Rose, and this one is called Blackberry or something blueberry <laughs> close enough and uh, at first I thought I was going to make gloves or hand warmers with them but uh, actually uh, I have a souvenir blanket which I've been working on for for years I've only created a couple squares but um, um, a lot of uh, the yarn that's kind of this thickness, I, uh, I tend to find it difficult what to make with them because if you want to make a big project you need a lot of yardage. Um, so I ended up using a lot of my souvenir yarn um, for squares for that blanket and it has um, purple and green shades and I thought Actually, this would be a perf perfect uh, addition to that. Um, so I think I might just make squares with them so that this blanket might actually make it into reality. So, uh, so the hand spinner having fun is beautiful yarn store. Uh, they do workshops as well, and they also have a U time group, uh, and U obviously spelled as. E W E um, on Thursdays. Um, yeah, there was just a lovely shop. And then uh, further up on the um, west coast, no, have I been swapping east and west all this time? I think so. <laughs> uh, further up on the east coast, um, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I just forget about things. Further up on the East Coast, um, there's this little town called Portree, um, and I think that's kind of the center of, of Sky. There is lots of shops there, lots of restaurants, and a little bit further, um, you'll have another yarn store called Sheila's Dare, or maybe I'm pronouncing that wrongly. Sheila's Dare, Sheila's Dare? I don't know. Um, Shilla's there? Anywho, um, they have a natural dye company. I thought I had another postcard of theirs. Um, but yeah, natural dye company, uh, lots of beautiful yarns and all naturally dyed. Um, absolutely beautiful shop, breathtaking, very elegant. And I got a couple yarns there, as well as um, this lovely card. It's a greeting card, but I'm thinking of just hanging it up, maybe framing it, of all kinds of British sheep breeds, and there are some Dutch sheep breeds in there as well. I thought it was, it was really fun. So I got that card. And because I also dye yarns with natural ingredients, I can really ex ex uh, appreciate the craftsmanship behind naturally dyed yarns. Um, and I managed to get these and because I can I can produce uh, you know corals and other oranges and reds and mostly yellows actually and pinks uh, but I don't really uh, have access well I do have access to it, but uh, I've never done an indigo dye fad. It seems uh, a little bit intimidating, uh, so I've never managed to get uh, greens and blues myself. Uh, so I got a couple of those. So this one is matter dyed, uh, and I think are they all the same? 
Yeah, I think I got all of the same blend. They had a couple of yarn blends. Oh, and here's their lovely logo. Really beautiful. Um, so this is the Koara. Uh, it's 70% Blue Face Luster and 30% Shetland. So it's 100% British fiber. It is British spun and British dyed uh, by Kirsty and Simon on the Isle of Skye. <laughs> um, this is 50 grams and these are, I think, 20 grams each. Um, they called these minis. Would you believe that? <laughs> 25 grams even wow so just 101 meter but um yeah i thought it was lovely and this is then 200 meters so this one is dyed with matter and indigo and because then you get this kind of purple color if if you just dyed with indigo you get this if i'm correct i think this is just indigo and of course you have different batches of indigo so you get a lighter and a blue uh, lighter and dark one uh this one is also indigo um it doesn't say on here but and uh, and i think this was first dyed in a yellow dye bath um lots of plants will give you a yellow dye uh, such as heather and uh, if you then dye over dye it it's just this beautiful green and then this one is matter dyed yeah so beautiful yarns beautiful and um i think they're very soft too uh because it's 70 percent blue face luster it's actually very soft fiber um yeah 30 percent shetland oh <laughs> momo says hello yeah Momo always gets very impatient at around 4 p.m. Isn't that right, Momo? <laughs> so, Isle of Skye was really a lightning flash visit because uh, we had, after Isle of Skye, we had to drive all the way to Loch Ness where we uh, stayed in a um, bed and breakfast at Inver Ferry Gag. <laughs> I'm not pronouncing that correctly. And we stayed at the Forester's Lodge, and this was one of the top two places we stayed in, if not the top one. Ugh, it's just lovely atmosphere. A uh, lovely homey atmosphere, and um, the surroundings were just... Ugh, Loch Ness is um i mean you know you have the monster stories and stuff but um the the forest around it and then peeking the the loch through the trees it's very um fairy tale ish but also a little bit on the spooky side uh and then during the night we heard uh owls and it was um very like magical but also eerie if you know what I mean uh, it was beautiful and so the Forester's Lodge um, if you ever go to um, Loch Ness surroundings you have to stay here because Jane and Jill really are the absolute most wonderful hosts and um, so you get the concept of a bed and breakfast where you know you you stay there and um, uh, you have your own room and then um, and then they make you breakfast but uh, uh, with uh, in the forester slot you also get dinner so uh, Jane emailed us a couple days before um, and you know we were staying at so many places um, so we kind of lost track of what email address was which place and uh, so so Jane emailed us uh, asking what we would like to have for dinner or if we would like to book dinner and um, and we thought that's gonna be in a couple days did I really need the order right now but you know we um, uh, we we booked uh, dinner you know and we, we got a whole range of options, uh, Highland beef burger, Scottish salmon, um, chicken pie, and um, 
so so we made the order and we we kind of forgot about it and then when we got there um we realized hey this is not a hotel you know a great a big hotel where they already booked a dinner reservation for us at their restaurant no it's two people uh where we stayed uh in two of their three rooms um no we stayed no, we had three rooms. We had all of the rooms. Um, and they cooked dinner for us. And it was, you know, we sat in their living room and beautifully decorated. And we were just having this kind of like Downton Abbey moment. <laughs> um, Momo is being dramatic. Momoche! Yeah! So it was just really, really lovely, and breakfast was amazing, um, and yeah, it, it was just amazing. If you ever go there, stay at the Forester's Lodge. Right, Momo? <laughs> um, and then at the, kind of the south tip of Loch Ness, there's this uh, town called Fort, uh, Fort Augustus. You have a lot of Nessie souvenir shops there which is really nice. Uh, for our cat sitter, we bought uh, a beautiful wine glass with uh, a glass Nessie in there. Uh, so that was really beautiful. Um, so yeah, it was just really, um, really great. And again, one of those places where we wanted to stay an extra day. Sorry. Oh, it's um, and then the day after, we drove from Loch Ness all the way to Dryman, which is in Loch Lomond area. And on the way there, we managed to stop at the uh, Glen Glenfinnan Viaduct, Aqueduct, uh, the Harry Potter Bridge. And it was very rainy, but still we managed to get a picture. So that was a fun little stop. And then we drove, it was a beautiful road, and we drove uh, around Loch Lomond uh, to Dryman. And uh, that was the last day together as a group with all five of us. And we had dinner at the Klachen Inn. And this is, well, every, like, <laughs> Every other pub claims this in Scotland, that they're the oldest pub. But uh, the Clachan Inn, I think, was from 1743. And it's a very well-known pub. There was a football game on that evening um, between the Glasgow Rangers and Frankfurt. And uh, Dryman is actually a little bit north of Glasgow, so... I think uh, lots of Glasgow Rangers supporters were also in Dryman uh, because the inn was booming with supporters and it was you know, a great atmosphere. Uh, but we were, uh, well, in mixed opinions about the, the inn and the restaurant being separate because, you know, um, for having dinner it's, uh, it's nicer to have a quieter atmosphere, but uh, we really enjoyed the you know, the wisps of the um, football match that we caught. Um, uh, it was a shame that they did lose in the end, but um, <laughs> we were there when the first goal was made by the Glasgow Rangers and the, the pub exploded. So yeah, <laughs> that was really fun. Again, amazing dinner, great food, um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and then that was our last night together as, uh, as, as the group. And then the next day, um, we actually saw a little yarn shop in Dryman. So if you're going to Glasgow and perhaps you, uh, you also have your own car, because I know lots of, you know, European visitors going to um, the UK uh, tend to not bring their own car, but if you can, I really um, advise advise you to. It's not that scary to drive on the left side. So, um, so yes, I went to Crack and Yarn. So at Crack and Yarn, uh, the owner is Pat Strong, and she's amazing. Uh, it was a lovely time chatting to her, and um, and as it turns out, she also had uh, an Erica kit for the Cessna pillows. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was really um, a surprise, you know, um, for me that, you know, someone just a random yarn shop has one of these Sasna kits uh, and for her that I came to stumble upon her shop that was um, just yeah just really nice and she had lots of local yarns and um, she had lots of com commercial yarns as well but um, you know I can get those online and um, she also she really knows her business so um, um, so she knew what was special about her shop and what visitors like me would like to see. Um, so she had lots of local yarns and I managed to buy this skein by Tweed Valley Yarn. Um, and, oh, it doesn't say exactly where. So scoured and spun in the UK uh, from the flock of Hammerlands sheep, Moffat. Uh, and alpaca fiber from Cumbria. Oh, I'm not sure what where Cumbria is, uh, but it's 100% British wool and fiber created from cheviot and alpaca fleece. And it's uh, the yarn range is called Clotted Cream. So already it's a winner. Um, and these colors are very much me, very much. Just that lovely kind of ice cream pastel pink but then also with some brown in there. I love this. Um, yeah, it's it's a one-of-a-kind colorway. Uh, it's very soft, I think, due to the alpaca. Um, and it's just super lovely. And because I also wanted to take something else with me, um, I browsed through their books and they had the wool journey with... Uh, puffin on the back cover and it's just a lovely little book um, uh, about Shetland and look at this this is what sold it for me look at this cute little map with a puffin and then Jameson and Smith's I mean Jameson's of, Sk of Shetland is that different Jameson and Smith and Jameson of Shetland Shetland oh it's Jameson and Smith right here Okay, I'll have to read more. Um, and there's a G and Stephen West shawl in here. Um, there's patterns by Malia, um, who is the Penelope of Stephen and Penelope. And <laughs> um, so yeah, beautiful patterns. Um, but I I just love it for the extra uh, stories and history. I, um, I'll have lots of fun reading up on this. This is all the designers visiting Shetland. Um, and it's published by Pom Pom, I think. Yes, Pom Pom Press. And look at this inner cover. Isn't that the cutest? So, yeah, lovely little book. Uh, so that was a lovely uh, set of souvenirs from Pat. Thank you, Pat. It was so lovely meeting you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that was Dryman. And I forgot to mention that um, uh, earlier, the previous day, after we went to the, uh, the Glenfinnan Bridge, we also visited Fort William. And um, uh, because Fort means, you know, castle here, um, I, I thought that, you know, Fort Augustus, Fort William, they were just castles, uh, but, but they're cities. So, <laughs> um, so uh, we, we stopped over in Fort William, we had a bite to eat, um, and there was a yarn shop and this was completely unplanned because I had not, um, I hadn't heard of a yarn shop in Fort William, and it was very hidden. Uh, well, not very hidden. There is a big sign saying Caledonian Wool, but you have to. It's very narrow, and you have to go up to the second floor. Um, uh, but I got a lovely pin there, and this is also from their logo, Caledonian Wool. And um, Caledonia is actually uh, a name for Scotland that was given to them by the Romans. Uh, so you'll see a lot of Caledonian this, Caledonian that, uh, it means Scottish. So this is their pin, Caledonian 
wool and I'll put in some pictures uh, they had lots of felting kits um, also from typically Scottish sightings and it was just a really lovely shop uh, they had lots of uh, local yarns um, you know uh, English and Scottish yarns they had lots of West Yorkshire spinners um, yeah they had a great um, variety. I, I just had a couple minutes to browse because we were in Fort William for lunch and we were getting super hungry. So <laughs> this was a lightning visit. Uh, but I got the pin and I got two ceramic buttons that were made by the mother of the yarn shop owner. And these are just beautiful. She only makes them for the shop um, other other shops have wanted them for wholesale, but she doesn't make it wholesale because it's just too much of an effort to make. Um, so these ceramic buttons, they're individually pressed with leaves and flowers. And of course I had to get one that kind of reminded me of thistles um, and then a leaf one because, you know, new leaf designs. So um, yeah, these are just beautiful and I'm really happy with them and I think they would look beautiful on a shawl or maybe a hat. I think that would be very cute too or on mittens, although that might be too bulky, but uh, or like as the top button in a cardigan. But they're just gorgeous to look at and um, yeah, just beautiful. So that was a lovely little stop. And then after after Dryman, uh, so we were still in the Loch Lomond area um, and we visited the Loch Lomond RSPB uh, center um, where they sold more pins, so we got to add more to our collection. Um, and we got to see an osprey, uh, so in Dutch that is visarend, um, so uh, fish eagle uh, and we actually saw him catch a fish so that was amazing we've never seen one in action before uh, and in this so they had just built a pathway through a forest and then onto the uh, loch um, do you still call it a beach I think so to the loch beach in this forest there were so many bluebells and it was just magical this there's no other word for it it was magical. So if you're ever in Scotland in May, then you will be amazed <laughs> because you see the bluebells everywhere. Uh, it was really, really beautiful. Um, so we made a small stop there and then uh, we made our way to Aberfeldy. Um, not Aberfoyle, although we did also visit there because there was another visitor center. Uh, but Aberfeldy, that was where our bed and breakfast was for the next two nights. And this was the Bray House bed and breakfast. And again, this was a uh, one of our top two stays of the whole trip, uh, Bray House, so that's B-R-A-E House, uh, by Patty and Jim. Uh, we had most wonderful stay, um, and lovely breakfast, and Patty knows all the places to go. She had lots of information about the restaurants at Aberfeldy. Um, and also, uh, since I told her that I was a knitter, she pointed me to Karelia House, which is not a place that you drive past. Uh, it's kind of a, uh, you know, you have to make a turn somewhere and then you end up there, but it was a huge craft store. It was uh, like the size of a car dealership. You know, you can kind of it was it was large um, and it was a yarn and uh, and fabric store um, um, Patty says they used to focus more on yarns now they focus more on fabrics and patchwork and quilting and such um, they have lots of workshops there uh, they also still had quite an impressive yarn range uh, by now my suitcase was almost exploding so I bought another book one that I have wanted for a long time and that is 200 fair isle motives uh, of 200 fair isle designs by Mary Jane Mucklestone and uh, Mary Jane Mucklestone 
um, she's American, I think, but she specializes in Fair Isle, and uh, she has a craftsy class. Uh, that's what where you might know her from. I I do too, um, and it's you know loaded with beautiful Fair Isle designs, and um, it's it's like a beautiful dictionary of Fair Isle patterns. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. It's like a like a source book. Um, so I I'm sure to do uh, some inspiration from here. Uh, so that was Karelia House. Um, but yeah, they had lots more. They 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 even had sewing machines. Uh, they had lots of fabrics with thistles on it, which I was also tempted to buy. Um, yeah, and then um, so Karelia House is technically still in Aberfeldy, but it's closer to what was it? Kenmore, uh, which is this beautiful little uh, town, um, again, at a lake. Is it Loch Lomond? I don't think so. Or is it the Tay? Oh, it's River Tay. No, Loch Tay. Yeah. And is there... There's a River Tay as well. Oh, it's, it was a beautiful, beautiful town. And they have a waterfront restaurant, but you do need to book in advance. We didn't get in. Um... Yeah, it was a lovely place to stay. Again, we wish we could have stayed longer. Uh, so many birds, so many trees. Um, beautiful. And the bed and breakfast had two cats, Jesse and Hamlet, and they were delightful. Um, yeah, so that was the last place that we stayed at. And from there, it was um, three hours driving to Newcastle, I think. We did have a stop on the way um, uh, to another center where they had lots of bird pins uh, and also to a Tesco superstore because I wanted to uh, buy a big box of tea <laughs> uh, because I love English tea and yes that was our Scotland trip Whew. I think this is a very long video um, and it will take me multiple days to edit this, but uh, I wanted to give you a full, <laughs> a full review, um, although I might do an in-depth review of some yarn stores later. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, as much as I did, because I love chatting. Um, and I am going to be doing a giveaway of some of the yarny goodies and that giveaway is going to happen over on my patreon page so I'll be putting together a gift package and then um, on my patreon um, people can enter to win this lovely gift package so I'll, I'll uh, post more about that um, in a couple days and um, yeah <laughs> in short Scotland is beautiful and amazing. Um, less yarn shops than I would have expected, but maybe I missed a whole lot. So um, if I did miss some yarn shops that you know, please do let me know and I can visit them next time. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!